be a vampire, and then inevitably his election will only serve to help break the government more, and then Republicans will point to that broken government as evidence of the fact that the government doesn't work and can't work. And <laughs> more Republicans Just not what I meant to do. Accept the fact that government it is so cold. I can't even fathom it. Oh, I look like I've been run over by a truck. Okay. Oh, I should have yawned before I press record. Hello, everybody. My name is Kelsey, and we're about to get very, very nerdy with some last minute reading. So 2022 was not my year for goals. I can already tell you that now. I haven't even looked at my goals that I, like the ones that I planned at the beginning of the year in January, because we're going to react to that later on this month. But I do know that there are some I, I'm not doing great at. So I thought what we would do is before we jump into all the Christmassy awesomeness of like my reading, we're going to try to squeeze in just a handful, a handful of books that I know I had on lists or had plans in my brain or something as far as trying to get certain books done before the end of the year. So I have four books that I am going to be reading in this video of just me trying to like finalize a few things so that when I get to the end of the year my goals are a little bit better. <laughs> so um, the theme for this video apparently is pink, which was not what I thought we were going to be doing. Um, so what I've decided to do is I picked four random books and I'll go through them really quickly. And then as I read them, I'll talk about them a little bit more. Uh, the first one is the very last book in the Bridgerton series, which is On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. I wanted to get through this series before the end of the year. I think I only had like two or three left and I just didn't make it a priority. And I'm kind of in this mood where I'm not sure what I want to read. But when I thought about reading this, I got really excited. So I think I'm in the mood for like maybe some historical romances. Uh, this one, like I said, it's just part of the Richardson series. It follows the last sibling we haven't followed yet, which is Gregory. And I believe he's on the way to a wedding with a friend because he wants to stop this wedding because he's in love with the person who's getting married. But then I think a romance blossoms between him and this girl who he's in the on like on the ride with I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna go but um I love Bridgerton so I can't wait to kind of put a bookmark on the end of it because it does kind of feel like I've reached the end even though I, I haven't yet I still have one more left so that's one that we we're going to be doing and then I wanted to get through at least half of the Mallory Anderson series by Joanna Lindsay so I've read up to three and I've read six because the sixth book was actually a Christmas book that I read last year. So I was hoping to get to six by the end of the year. So I have four and five left. So we have The Magic of You and Say You Love Me. I don't remember who these follow. Uh, the Magic of You follow, it's Amy Mallory, um, who is a cousin. And then this one, Say You Love Me, follows... Um, Lord Derek Mallory, who might be one of the four brothers. I don't remember. I can't remember the like, um, like the family tree yet. So I'll have to go into it a little bit more and figure out who these are related to. Because I do believe that like the first half follows the Mallory's and then the second half follows the Anderson's, which is part of the Mallory family. The third book, uh, uh, Anderson marries a Mallory. So like they're part of the same family, but they're all the cousins and it just kind of gets a little crazy. Um, so I'll try to remember who these are, but they're romances between families and I don't remember what either of these are about. So I'll let you know when I get to them, but that'll put me at reading the first six in the series, which is what I wanted. And then the last book I'm going to squeeze in is a rom-com of sorts romance book that I've been wanting to read and I keep putting on lists and I keep wanting to get to and I just don't. It was on my list of books like 12 books to read by the end of the year which spoiler is not happening. I've read like six of them so this is on there and I just really want to get to it and that is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I loved this author's first book Red, White, and World Blue. This came out last year and the author came out with another book this year which is their first YA book and I haven't decided if I want to read that out not yet or not. I'm thinking I do just because I do enjoy this author, but I want to make sure I do it. It wasn't just a fluke and everything about this book sounds interesting. Um, so it's like a rom-com between 
August who lives in New York City and Jane who's someone she meets on the subway and Jane has this very like 80s style but then it's discovered that she's actually stuck in the 80s and I don't actually know what that means or how that's gonna work um but this was again on that list of books to read by the end of the year so I'm hoping to get to that one and these three so it's going to be romance specifically historical romance heavy which I am not at all upset about but that's the goal. These are the books I want to do. I don't know what the plans are this weekend. We don't really have any. We haven't quite decorated. As you can see, we haven't really decorated for Christmas yet. So I'm really hoping to get to at least decorating in here for Christmas because I want to start filming all of my Christmassy kind of videos for the end of the year and put up some decorations. We have the tree up. There's just no decorations on it. So we need to do that this weekend. So you might see us get a little decorative this weekend. I don't really know while I'm listening to these books. So I do have all of them on audio, which is going to be the easiest way, I think, to get through them. But that is my plan for this video. It's just some very last minute trying to squeeze some goals in. And I'm actually really excited. All four of these books, I'm in a huge mood reading mood right now. And I don't really know what I want to read. And I'm, re I'm really feeling these. So the fact that I'm like, I made this plan and I'm immediately going to do it, I think it's going to bode well. I think we're going to be good. So um, I'm going to read the Julia Quinn book first. That's the one that I'm going to start with first. Um, and I can fly through these in like a day usually. So uh, I suspect that this will be a really easy one to get through. But um, yeah, come along with me as I try to fulfill some goals so that I don't look to so, so bad when we take a look back because I don't remember what all of them are but I do remember some of them and I know that it's not gonna be pretty. friends it is a few days later and I am here because I have officially finished the first book of this vlog which was the Bridgerton book on the way to the wedding I ended up giving this one four stars I really enjoyed it it was really fun to dive back into this world it's so fascinating to me because I've listened slash read all of these books via audiobook and the same narrator does all of them so to be able to jump back into the stories with characters that I love seeing past couples that I love since this follows the entire family and having that like very comforting narrator that I've come to really like appreciate her stuff was awesome it was just kind of like it was so it's such a weird surreal experience because it's like you're being hugged and like 
cozied in by one of your past favorite books of all time which you know that feeling of like when you go back and reread a favorite that feeling of like coziness and like coming home that's the vibe I got except for I didn't know the story in this one because I hadn't read this book yet but I knew all the stories before this and again audiobook narrator really was great in this one I didn't really know what I was getting into I mean I knew it was Gregory's story but that was really about it and this follows Gregory and he is like believes in love he's like basically seen every single one of his siblings fall in love and marry for love and he's like I know it's out there like it's there I'm gonna find the one and it's gonna be amazing so at a house party of sorts that his sister-in-law Kate and Anthony are throwing he stumbles across this woman named Hermione and she is the one that everyone wants she's like the belle of the ball it's her and her best friend Lucy that are always just kind of hanging out and everyone wants Hermione and Lucy's just kind of hanging out there and Hermione is convinced that she's in love with somebody else so she doesn't ever give any of these people the time of day and so Gregory sees Hermione and is like that's the one that's the girl I'm gonna marry and through this experience um he basically like teams up with Lucy because Lucy's not at all likes the person that Hermione thinks that she's in love with so Lucy kind of helps him out to see if he can win Hermione over and that is literally like the first quarter of this book it just kind of spirals from there and what I loved about this book is you really get to see the relationship between Gregory and Lucy unfold throughout the course of this novel there is a jump in time in the middle of this book and there is a lot more daring shenanigans isn't even the right word like there's some stuff that goes down at the end of this book which we don't really see in any of the other books it's something that you see a lot in historical romances like you need that very last big climactic scene and while there are those in the past books they're never to the level I think that this one is and I it had me guessing it had me guessing the whole way which is not what I expected I expected with these books you go in knowing how it's going to end maybe you don't know the, the journey you're going to take to get there but you know how it's going to end and this had me guessing the whole time so there's a couple of things about Gregory as a character and the writing itself about Gregory um especially near the end it was there was a lot of moments of like he was saying things over and over and over again to convince the reader that he believed them or thought them and instead of like showing us that he actually did think those things so there was a little bit of like I was like okay you're, you're telling me too much without showing me and so that's why I didn't get a full five stars but it got four and a half like it is so close to a five star which is not what I expected because like I have like zero tie to Gregory as a character he's barely in any of the other books in the Bridgerton series itself when it starts like this series is over the course of like 10 to 15 years and when it starts he's super young so it's weird to think about the super young kid being a 26 year old in this book and falling in love and like getting married and like having a life like that whereas if I separated myself like I did it makes more sense so I just I really enjoyed my time I'm really glad that I did it and I've now officially finished the Bridgerton series which is so exciting um there is a spinoff series called the Smythe Smith series it's actually a quartet and I do have that so that's probably going to be my next um step into Julia Quinn because I do want to read all of her books I do really enjoy the things that I've read from her but I did it I officially finished the Bridgerton series which is very exciting and now we're going to start on the next book in the Mallory series by Joanna Lindsay which is The Magic of You so I did dive into a little bit of the synopsis I still don't know who this Amy Mallory person is I think she's a cousin of someone like there used to be a like um family tree in one of these books so I'm gonna have to see if I could find it to figure out exactly who she is but she's a cousin of sorts it says right here that she has reached marriageable age and she has her sights set on a most inappropriate mate a straight-laced American ship captain who once nearly had her uncle James hung for piracy he was the third actually the, the last book it was his book um and so it's her and this guy named warren anderson so they are cousins by marriage i believe because james marries an anderson um in the third book and like that's how the andersons tie in so i'm wondering how that's gonna work because they're super di like very distant cousins um but i feel like we're gonna get piratey vibes within this one because it is following a captain. So I'm excited to dive into this one. We'll see how 
how it goes if I can dive into this one and then the next one right away. I was going to do the three historical books right away, but because because the I did look into the other one as well and it seems different. So I'm interested, but I'm very excited to dive into this one. I'll see how I think. I feel like we've met Amy before, but maybe I made that up because it says that she's now Marriage Blade, which makes me think that she was really young in the rest of the series. And I don't remember a lot of the kids in the early parts of the series, but we're only on book four. So I'll start this one. And I'll let you know how I how I think how I'm doing with it. Um, but yeah, that's my thought process so far. I finished a book and I'm about to start another one. And I am living my best life right now. Like all the historical romanceness. I'm living. I'm living for it. <laughs> a few days and I finished both <laughs> as you can probably tell both of the Joanna Lindsay books I decided to hold off until I finished both talk to you about them because I figured they'd be relatively similar on my thoughts and I was all kinds of wrong so first I picked up the magic of you I can't remember if I told you what this is about or not but it follows Amy Mallory who was a cousin um I now understand the Mallory, like, now that I've read this little bit, I kind of process. And so, like, the Mallory family is five siblings. There's four boys and one girl. And the girl passed away a while before the series started. So the first book follows her daughter. But this one follows Amy, who is one of the two older brothers' daughters. And she has finally reached, like, adulthood. She's about to turn 18. She stopped dressing like a child, started dressing like a woman, because she's about to try to find a suitor. And so it follows her, but she has her heart set on this guy named Warren Anderson, who was one of the Anderson siblings. They are related by marriage, like one of her cousins, no, one of her uncles married an Anderson. And so like, they are very distantly related, but they're technically cousins. So take that what you will, but she has her heart set on Warren. She's like, he's the one, he's the one I'm gonna marry. And of course he has been hurt before in the past by one woman specifically. And so he thinks that all women are bad. And so he refuses to marry any of them. He only ever like, We'll, we'll take mistresses here and there but like he won't ever get married and so she's like I'm gonna change his mind and so it's their relationship I think this one four stars I thought it was quite good there are parts of it like it's still not my favorite I would still consider the second book which is the very first book that I read in the Mallory series my favorite in this series so far but I really enjoyed the banter this is really about Amy trying to convince Warren that like she's the one and so like she wants to marry him like she's trying to convince him to marry her and they have a lot of moments and he finds her really attractive at first and then he starts to fall for her throughout the book and 
it's really, they have so many verbal sparring matches, which is a phrase that I use a lot here, but like the banter, the arguing, like those conversations were so funny to read about because like she would get the upper hand and then he would think he would have the upper hand and then she would one up him again because like he's just not used to the Mallory style of doing that because that's just what they do. They're all really sarcastic people and that's how they show affection is by sad, by sass and by like yelling at each other basically but their conversations were always really entertaining and so like while their romance wasn't my favorite they were just fun to read about like I loved scenes when it was just the two of them talking because they were just they were so fun to read so there's not a whole lot as far as the plot that was like specifically interesting it was fine it was a good book it was one of the better books in the series but it still wasn't my favorite but I enjoyed it more than I thought I would I got about 10% of the way through the book and then I couldn't put it down. I just wanted to keep reading and I'm pretty sure it was just because of that verbal sparring stuff. But it got four stars. So that was a good, a good one. And then we picked up the next one, which is Say You Love Me. And this one follows Derek Mallory, who is another cousin in the same line as like Amy. His father is the oldest Mallory. So he's like the, the head of the family, if you will. And Derek is his heir. And he runs across this brothel that he and his other cousin Jeremy are like the two that are like they're basically the ones who like cause all the issues and so they were visiting a brothel one night a brothel is not the right word but like um a house of ill repute is what it's called so maybe it is a brothel but because Jeremy wants to see someone there and so he while they're there they discover this auction going on and there's this girl named Kelsey which is very, it was very interesting to read about this character that had my name. But we follow Kelsey as well. And she has been put in this really tough situation by her uncle. Um, because her family, her parents have passed away. So she's, she and her sister are living with her aunt and uncle. And her uncle doesn't really have a good mind for business. And he has lost everything. And so they're trying to figure out a good way to like save their house. And they have literally like two days to do it. And so the best way to think that they can do it is if she gets sold to be someone's mistress and then this person will pay the uncle specifically for her. Um, and so that way the uncle can have some money back to like help out his estate. And so she gets put on by this guy who is absolutely horrendous, like literally will abuse all the women that he's with. And Derek is the main guy here. He sees this and goes, I can't do that. So he bids on her himself and ends up winning her. And so it's their relationship. This got three stars because the very, very, very end was good. And the beginning was not terrible. But there was just something about like this auction that didn't sit well with me. And there was nothing particularly incredible about their relationship that would like maybe make the auction better like oh they're, they're so in love I believe this chemistry between them that I can overlook kind of how it started and I just couldn't do that like they're, they're they just kind of were bland they were a very bland relationship there wasn't anything particularly believable about them as a couple um it felt like they just couldn't stay away like there was a lot of lust going on but there wasn't a lot of love going on and even the lust was just written blah um and I will say these books were published in the 90s. So there's this section that's not the middle, but it's like the latter half of the book. Not the end end, but like in that weird in between the middle and the latter, the end of the book is a lot of really rough situations. So this guy that really wanted her um, causes an issue. And so trigger warnings for sexual assault. A lot of it. Um he's not a good person and it's really brutal it's really rough but like some of the characters in here like there's one character specifically who has a lot of physical ailments and there are some very not great things said about him by some of our characters and I don't know if like because it was written in the 90s like maybe that wasn't a thing that they would have considered not okay to be written but like it's just it's made me feel icky while I was reading it because I was like that feels wrong that they're talking about this character that way even though the character they're talking about is absolutely horrendous and we do not like him as a person like he's a terrible character um I still am like I don't think he deserves to be talked about in that way so I don't know it's just it it Eh, 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 you know I think this one's my least favorite so far in the series but 
I did it. I read them. And now I've finished the first half. I think it's the first half. There are six books, which I'm pretty sure is the first half. Close to, at least, of the series. So a really good one and a really meh one. So yeah, those are my thoughts on those two. And then now we're going to round out this video with reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, which I'm very excited about. I probably won't come to you until I finished it, to be honest. I don't know what this weekend holds. There's really don't, I don't really have any plans, but I've been trying to decorate the tree for like two weeks at this point. And I got all the ornaments out. They're all lined up. I just haven't put them all in the tree, so I need to do that. Um, but it feels like a very chill weekend, so I'm hoping to get through this one and finish it this weekend. That's my plan, is to finish it this weekend. But I'm really excited about this because I've only read one book by Casey McQuiston, and while I absolutely adored Red, White, and World Blue, I want to know how good this one is. Like, everyone talked about this book when it came out. Everyone really, really enjoyed it, and I have high hopes for it. I think it's going to be good, but I want to know, you know? Like, I need to know. So this is the one. This is the one we're going to round out this vlog with, and I will let you know how it goes. I have my fingers crossed. I have high hopes. But that is my update right now is I've done three of the four books I mentioned and it's working. It's like I'm, I'm actually doing it, you guys. I'm actually doing the goals. It's crazy. here because y'all I did it. I did the thing. I did the thing I didn't think I was going to be able to do. And I finished One Last Stop uh, by Casey McQuiston. This one ended up getting four and a half stars from me. I really enjoyed this one. Not nearly as much as Red, White, and Royal Blue. I still think that one's my number one. But this one had a lot of very interesting conversations. This one was more about like everlasting love in the sense of like crossing time and who you'll spend the rest of your life with and stuff like that and just getting to know someone. There is a sense of coming of age is not the right thing but a little bit of coming of age with August because she is at the end of her college like she's transferred colleges like a bunch of different times. She is I believe they've already they've said it in this book and I'm trying to remember what how old she is. I think she's 24 um and so she has gone to a bunch of different colleges and changed her mind on what she wanted to do and so she's transferred over and over and over again and the most recent time is just she's transferred to a school in New York City and that's why she's moved to New York City and this is the first place where she actually like realizes how close she is she's only a semester away I really she's only a couple of credits away from graduating and so like that's a conversation so it's her trying to figure out what she wants to do when she graduates as well because she's never really known and she has a very complicated relationship with her mom and it's just her seeing her kind of like overcome that as well as finding someone and some place to like put down roots and this apartment she lives in which the book starts with her kind of interviewing to get this apartment or inter interviewing to become a, an apartment um like a roommate and it's her and three other people are in this apartment and just their little like friendship is very found family vibes I mean she still has a family she still has her mom but this is very much a like these people are here for her throughout this whole experience of her basically talking to someone who got stuck in the 70s and doesn't know a lot of modern things and a lot of the stuff that, that she would be saying most people would just look at her like she's crazy whereas her housemates not housemates her apartment her roommates are like there for her and they're like yeah we're here we're gonna we're gonna help you through it I mean it does help that one of her roommates is like a psychic and so like you have to believe in some stuff to really believe her but anyway I just got off on a tangent there moral of the story is that this was really really good I definitely 
had a lot of like moments. I definitely teared up at the end. I really felt for August and Jane as a couple. I liked seeing them grow together and kind of figure out what it is that they wanted from life and wanted from each other and how to solve the problems that they were in the middle of and also see the world from someone who is stuck in the 70s, especially watching someone who grew up as part of the LGBTQ plus community in the 70s and how different that is from today and how like there are some relationships that Jane is struggling, not necessarily struggling with, but like having people be much more open now than they were in the 70s is like different for Jane. And there's just a lot of conversations I think were really interesting and the ways that they helped Jane kind of remember her her past a little. I don't know. It's just, it was really fun and I'm really glad I read it. And it was so good and I had a great time. Like I plowed through this in two days. I basically started this yesterday. Not quite. I think I might have read a, like one chapter on Friday, but I basically started read most of this yesterday and I made it to like 75% of the way through the book yesterday alone like I was very invested in what was going on so uh this one was a very quick read surprisingly I thought it was gonna take me a little bit longer but I did it I read it and I gave it four and a half stars it was so good and I'm so happy that I did it finally oh I felt like so accomplished this vlog has made me feel so accomplished and like just what I wanted to read this year and even though I know that this doesn't like is it going to help a lot of my goals? I still haven't figured out what those are yet. Um, I'm going to film that a little bit later in the month, but I have a reaction to my 2022 goals. And I just know that I'm not, I didn't do great, but like this makes me feel better that I took the time to like dedicate to just a couple more things that I just didn't, wasn't able to make time for. And I thought I was going to be able to get only three of the four books read that I had planned. I did all four. It's amazing. I don't know what happened. Um, I was a reading machine for some reason, but I did it. I finished this book and I feel so accomplished because like even the worst book in this video got three stars, which is pretty normal for me, but like three out of the four books in this vlog got a four star in some way. So I had such a good time reading some last minute reads with you. I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog and whatever it turned out to be. Uh, please let me know how you thought of any of the books if you've read them if there's any last minute reads that you're trying to get to for the rest of the year I'm excited because now I can dive into all my Christmas reads and I have a good amount I have a good amount of reads so I'm excited to dive into those and thank you for coming on this journey with me while I tried to fi finalize like uh, just a few more things I hope you enjoy but if you like this video and I very much hope that you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links so don't forget to check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!